Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon. Welcome back to Building Literacy and True Identity here on Kingdom Influencers Broadcast. I am your host and founder of Hope in Christ Ministries and the host of Building Literacy and True Identity Podcast, as well as workshops that I um, reach out to the community and teach youth about building the literacy and understanding of God's Word and thereby walking in their true identity in Christ and not just youth um, adults as well and so let's open with a word of prayer and we'll begin today's show dear Heavenly Father we thank you for another day we thank you for another show we thank you for your word oh God for your word is truth oh God and that when we hear the truth oh God when we know the truth oh God then that truth your truth will set us free. Father God, I pray that you would open our hearts, our minds, our um, eyes, and our ears to remove every scale, every deception, remove the stony places that we would be able to come and draw to you, that you can penetrate, Father God. I pray, Lord, for those that are listening, that they would hear your voice. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, welcome to today's show. We will continue in Genesis, and um, we are still talking about Noah, 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 and Genesis 9 is where we begin, and our um, learning target is to understand God's covenant, and then our essential question is, what does it mean to be in covenant with God? What does it mean to be in covenant with God? And also, I want to kind of add another essential question is, um, what is the sin nature? Um, I'll talk about that just briefly, but um, we'll focus more on the covenant, the covenant. And uh, my key vocabulary words for this uh, lesson is covenant, of course, um, sin nature and faithfulness, faithfulness. Um, We know that that pertains to God and God alone. Um, So let's begin with reading. Um, Genesis 9 in its entirety from um, the Amplified Bible and then we will begin our lesson our questions our activities and our discussion all right so Genesis 9 says covenant of the rainbow Um, that's the subtitle and it says and God blessed Noah and his sons and said to them be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth the fear and the terror of you shall instinctive that's the word that's in parentheses in every so be instinctive in every animal of the land and in every bird of the air and together with everything that moves on the ground and with all the fish of the sea they are given into your hand every moving thing that lives shall be food for you i give you everything as i gave you the green plants and the vegetables but you shall not eat meat along with its life that is its blood for your life blood i will most certainly require in accounting from every animal that kills a person i will require it and from man um, from every man's brother that is anyone who murders i will require the life of man verse six whoever sheds man's blood unlawfully by man um shall his blood be shed and they're talking about judicial government here um for in the image of god he made man verse seven as for you be fruitful and multiply populate the earth abundantly and multiply in it then god spoke to noah and to his sons with him saying now behold i am establishing my covenant binding agreement solemn promise with you and with your descendants after you and with every living creature that is with you the birds the livestock and the wild animals of the earth along with you um of everything that comes out of the ark every living creature of the earth i will establish my covenant with you never again shall all flesh be cut off by the water of the of a flood nor shall there ever again be a flood to destroy and ruin the earth 
and God said this is the token visible symbol memorial of the solemn covenant which I am making between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations I set my rainbow in the clouds and it shall be a sign of a covenant between me and the earth it shall come out come about when I bring clouds over the earth that the rainbow shall be seen in the clouds and I will compassionately remember my covenant which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh and never again will the water become a flood to destroy all flesh when the rainbow is in the clouds and I look at it I will solemnly remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth and God said to Noah this rainbow is a sign of the covenant solemn pledge binding agreement which I have established between me and all living things on the earth verse 18 the sons of Noah who came out of the ark were Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Ham would become the father of Canaan. These are the three sons of Noah, and from these men the whole earth was populated and scattered with inhabitants. And Noah began to farm and cultivate the ground, and he planted a vineyard. He drank some of the wine and became drunk, and he was uncovered and lay exposed inside his tent. Ham, the father of Canaan, saw by accident the nakedness of his father, and to his father's shame told his two brothers outside. Those are the words in parentheses verse 23 so Shem and Japheth took a robe and cut it on both their shoulders and put it on both their shoulders and walked backwards and covered the nakedness of their father their faces were turned away so that they did not see their father's nakedness when Noah awoke from his wine induced stupor he knew that his younger um, he knew what his younger son Ham had done to him so he said cursed be Canaan the son of Ham a, a servant of servants he shall be to his brothers he also said blessed be the Lord the God of Shem and let Canaan be his servant may God enlarge the land of Japheth and let him dwell in the tents of Shem and let Canaan be his servant Noah lived 300 and 50 years after the flood so all the days of Noah were 950 years and he died all right so that was a pretty lengthy chapter but um, we always read it in in the entirety of it so let's jump right in here um, so we're gonna review review um, the instructions first of all the instructions that God um, gave when they um, came off of the ark the flood was over and God gave them instructions and I noted something when I was writing this out um, and I've written about Genesis 9 a few times but I noted something this time I noted that God spoke the same words to Noah and his sons as he did to humanity and the animal kingdom at the beginning of Genesis at the very beginning of the book he spoke this is the exact same words he blessed them and he said be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth so he gave them a command he gave them a command so that was the first thing that I noticed wait the same instructions God is um, washed away um, all the sin all of the the wickedness that was taking place on the earth back then and and then um, as n the instructions to Noah um, the one who walked with God remember the scripture said Noah walked with God um, and one of the instructions for him and his family was to be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth so it was the same command, same command. So that was the first set of instructions that I noticed. 
Um, and then some other instructions that I noticed in this chapter. And that instruction was, don't eat the flesh with its life, the blood in it. Don't eat flesh with its life. And then it goes on to say, for um, man is the image of God. Um, so that's important to notate. So God said, be fruitful. Don't eat the life, the blood. The, um, don't eat the flesh with the uh, blood in it. And then um, he also gives some more instructions. Whoever sheds man's blood by man, his blood shall be shed. For in the image of God, he made him. He made man. All right. And then, um, of course, populating the earth. Um, being fruitful and multiplying so um, in order for them I just think about this before we go any further so I just wanted to start with the instructions um, that God gave them um, but in order for them to follow these instructions they have to be willing to follow God to be willing to do what God is asking them to do um, they had to be willing Noah um, was the leader here and he had to be willing to follow what God was saying so I wanted to start with the instructions so God gives many of us instructions um, as well um, and the main instruction is to follow me seek after me search you know after me God wants us to know him he's our creator so you know um, the instructions of the of the commandments and um, I know for a while we said it was 10 but it's many more um, but um, there are 10 that categorize all the others but um, those are instructions um, just like when you know as a teacher um, my instructions before I even start a school year every single year our instructions are um, listed um, and they're um, considered the code of ethics and um and even before testing we're in the um season of the um georgia milestone and they they tell us these are the guidelines these are the instructions i need you to follow and if you don't follow them there's going to be an issue for you and so we have to understand that god's command god's instructions for us are far greater and um sometimes we put man's instructions above god's instructions so we have to be careful with um that very very careful so those were the instructions now let's look at a few questions that I wrote here um, first of all um, what promises did God um, speak to them God spoke some promises he promised some things um, to know in his families and uh, his family um, and his descendants after after him um, he said into your hand um, First of all, the animal kingdom is given. And I'm just paraphrasing that. To your hand, uh, um, he gave dominion. Okay? Because if God didn't give dominion, we'll be, we wouldn't even be having this conversation right now. Or, or, or be recording this podcast right now. If God had never given humanity dominion over the animal kingdom. And we all know that. Um, they shall be food for you, as I gave. Um, the green plant so that was um, one of the promises that the animal kingdom basically won't overtake you you know um, and then the other one is I um, will establish my covenant with you and your descendants after you and every living living creature all flesh shall never again be cut off um, by water um, the flood and um, neither shall there again be a flood to destroy the whole entire earth and so um that was the the promises um and then that also goes to um back to that word we talked about as the key vocabulary word the covenant the covenant that god made so a covenant is agreement is a promise uh um something that someone um you come into agreement with it and um you know you have a covenant with okay we you do this and you know hey you can you know keep your car and um as long as you do you know the stipulation but this particular covenant from god he didn't put a if in front of it it was a covenant 
that he was going to keep regardless. Regardless. He knew that some chapters later or you know, generations later in, in the, in the um, physical sense that that sin nature was going to rise again and that sin nature um, began to uh, pop its head up um, not um, far towards the end of this particular chapter so that's what we mean when we say covenant and promises that God has said um, and there was nothing attached he just promised that he would never he would never destroy the earth with water and that that we would know it by the rainbow the rainbow we would know it by the rainbow in the sky um, when you see the rainbow um, he said he would remember um, he said it shall come about when I bring clouds over the earth that the rainbow shall be seen in the clouds and I will compassionately remember my covenant which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh and never again will the water become a flood to destroy all flesh so that was the covenant and the rainbow was the symbol the symbol to um, remind us of God's um, faithfulness so that remember that word that was part of our key vocabulary so that was the promises um, and then my next question is what does it mean to have an everlasting covenant what does it mean to have an everlasting covenant um, well only um, I believe God can give us an everlasting covenant um, and everlasting means forever I mean it doesn't end um, and so that's the simple answer to that um, it doesn't end it's forever um, and a lot of times like I said with this particular covenant covenant um, we notice even today in 2018 that God is has always continuously kept that covenant even to, to this to this day yes there have been tsunamis yes there have been different um, flooding in certain locations but never to flood the entire earth as he promised in Genesis all right so remember that all right and the next question is how did the sin nature show up again how did this sin nature show up again now we know that the flood took place God wiped out sin and wickedness and here come this sin nature again so how did it show up we read in um, in chapter 9 but um, it starts in verse 20 and it says and Noah began to farm and cultivate the ground and he planted a vineyard he drank some of the wine and became drunk and he was uncooked uncovered and lay exposed inside the, his tent Ham the father of Canaan saw by accident the nakedness of his father and um, told his two brothers outside so Shem and Japheth took a robe and put it on both their shoulders and walked backwards walked backwards and covered the nakedness of their father their faces were turned away so that they did not see their father's nakedness so Ham the sin nature of um, humanity um, walks in and, and looks upon the nakedness and, and um, not to you know focus too much on this but um, just to you know that he had a choice just like his brothers had a choice his brothers noticed their reaction was different um, they saw what was you know what had happened and um, they but they honored God by not looking upon you know their father nakedness in um, as if you know any other man's nakedness um, and so they honored that and honored their father as well and Ham did not so his sin nature he, he chose that's what he chose to do um, he may have done it as any but he his response was different his response was different from his brother so that's where that sin nature uh, rises up even in us we um, have to keep our eyes um, 
pure you know the bible speaks about what we put before our eyes and then our ear gate and our eye gate because um you know the the eyes the window to the soul and so we have to be very careful what we um look upon because again the sin nature and then all the different things it starts with um that and so we have to be very very careful in that so that's how the sin nature showed back up even after the flood all right so um one other thing that i noted when god said that um when the rainbow is in the clouds and i look at it i will suddenly remember the everlasting covenant between god and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth and god said to Noah, this rainbow is the sign of the covenant um which i have established between me and all living so god said i will see the rainbow and i will remember i remember my covenant and my everlasting covenant with noah and so uh, one of the things that i always every time i hear you know in scripture or read in scripture um god remembers like i i that's a term for us um because does god forget somehow and and that's the first words that come to my mind did god somehow forget and the answer is no um we know that that is um it's him saying that i will be faithful to you everlasting um and so my notes that i wrote to myself just for myself um i said god cannot forget and so this passage is a reminder for us to know that he is faithful and he will continue to be faithful even when we're not faithful because it didn't say that you know if they were faithful he made a covenant with them that the earth would never be um destroyed again so um it's him saying that i will be faithful um and then i also wrote he is faithful um even when again we're not faithful and the rainbow is the sign um for us to look and know that he is not like man he um he is not fickle he doesn't one minute um says uh, he'll do something for us and then next minute he doesn't um so he's the truth um and what he has spoken to us his word he keeps his word um and that's his faithfulness and then i also wrote um us trusting him us us trusting in him and not um leaning to our own understanding our, our narrow um way of understanding in in our natural mind um and therefore if god promised me that um just for example you know um did he deliver me from asthma i mean that's one of the afflictions that um i've been diagnosed with um then i can stand on that truth that god will deliver me and heal me because his covenant he, he made a covenant and he doesn't break um his covenant it doesn't change just because um even like i said even when we were um not faithful he loves us he loves us he loves us he wants to heal us he wants to deliver us but most of all he wants our heart and so we have to remember that um and so uh, another note I, I i notated and i want you to also journal you know your response to this part of scripture you know does god somehow forget or is this him being faithful and another thing that i wrote that um practical application for me is i said my hurt by man has caused me to view god in the same manner um i started believing that somehow i would do something and god would stop loving me and leave me um and that he wouldn't heal me or um he wouldn't um be with me he wouldn't love me um because i moved away from um walking with him and um you know moved away meaning um i got distracted by man and wanting to um please others as opposed to drawing near to him and so i began to think that you know god god didn't love me um there was things that if i did this thing you know it would cause god to stop loving me but this scripture helps me understand it god is faithful 
to every generation he is everlasting um but again he wants our heart and we have to draw near to him um and i would think that he didn't you know love me like he did at first and so it and it's just like we, you know like i said um it was the way i spewed man um i had dealt so much with um people and so i thought god would do people do me the same way as people did and so we have to be very careful because we see here in genesis 9 that god is faithful he's faithful all right, so our activity before we get into our mentoring moment, um, our activity is I want you to uh, draw a um, T-chart, but also under the chart, under the T-chart, draw a line under the bottom. And um, so on one side of the T-chart, we want to um, write covenant in government, covenants in government. Um, and then on the other side, God's covenant, um, covenants with God. And so I'm going to write the differences write the differences of that this is called comparing and contrasting for those that want um what this strategy is called um and so on one side you're going to tell what a government government covenant may look like and then on the other side um god's covenant what a covenant from god looks like and then underneath right how are they similar um write a couple sentences about um what do they have in common? How are they similar? And then the ultimate question is, what, how, I'm sorry, how does God's covenant supersede any other covenant? How does God covenant, how is God covenant different um, and supersede any other covenant? Um, and you're going to write this out for yourself, but I wrote it out for myself and I simply said, it doesn't change. God doesn't change his covenant doesn't if he said it you can you can take it to the bank because it will take place he if he said it and and there's sometimes you know of course he'll say if you you know and you read the scriptures in Deuteronomy um if you you know then this you know he his promises are yes and amen but we have to participate you know and obeying him you know the promises are for his people and if we're not walking with god we can't receive his promises like god is not santa claus and, and a lot of times we see santa claus is a fictitious a fictitious character so that everybody understand because this this is um hoping christ ministries and um um i've never taught my son about a santa claus and so but i just wanted to bring out that point god is not a santa claus this uh fantasy um and um, we get all these gifts and gifts and gifts even when we don't deserve them. Um, even when, you know, I just see certain things and, you know, even when we haven't been, as as they say, nice to say, are you being naughty or nice? Um, but it's not like that with God. God's covenant is truth. You know, but are we his people? That's the question. Um, and also, um, the difference between the any covenant with the government and a covenant with God is the source God can be trusted. We may not necessarily be able to trust others, even in local government, state government, whatever, federal government, whatever it is. But the source, God, we can trust him that he's going to do exactly what he said he's going to do in our lives as we obey. Now, sometimes governmental covenants or laws and rules and things that are written change from day to day. And again, we may not um, be able to trust the source behind it and the heart behind it. We know that God is God and we know that he's holy and we know that he's righteous. Um, because that's where righteousness comes from him and so we have to remember that all right so that's the activity of comparing and contrasting uh, government natural government uh, with um, God I mean natural government and a covenant from them and God's covenant we can trust the source okay all right and so let's let's finish up uh, we have a mentoring moment and I simply 
want you in this mentoring moment is I want you to take your notebook, your journal um, that you often write in and I want you to write out your own covenant to, to Jesus. What would you um, agree um, to try to do to walk in a closer relationship with him? What things do you need to um, to write out and really, really um, try to commit commit to and I have a few things that I wrote down for myself just because I always participate in the activities that I give so write a covenant what covenant remember God's covenant and his instructions were very very specific never again never again will the flood take out basically every every all um, life Okay, and so my examples of covenant and um, again, we're not God, of course, we we definitely um, without him, we can't keep it, <laughs> but um, to want to commit our lives to him. So my first one is I commit to focus on you, God, and not on people, not even family, not anything that distracts me. I commit. I I want to do my very best to commit to focus on you and then my number two is I commit to do my very best to read the word um, daily so I can hear your voice and not the voice of all because there are a lot of false prophets in the land now so we have to know what God's word said about every topic we have to be prayerful and know what God's word said. And that would be my next one. I commit to time in prayer with you. So, and, and I commit to um, do my very best to let go of relationships and, you know, um, connections that are not of you or what you desire that pull me away from you. Um, and also, um, my, my final one is I commit to um, your purpose for my life not my own purpose but your purpose for my life so that's my commitment and then um write write it out put it up on your mirror put it up in your bathroom and we we can repeat it you know um i commit these things i commit to walk with jesus i commit to to um walk away from friends that keep me from um walking in relationship with christ and you know so just different things like that all right, so um, really, really, really genuinely um, really focus on that and not just do it just to be doing something. Amen. So um, the last part, of course, is our grammar and literacy fund. Um, we, again, I mentioned, you heard me mention earlier in the show that um, we are in the um, state exam season and ours is called the Georgia Milestone. And um, so, of course, I'm pulling out some of those terms um, that may be on the assessment. And so one of them is symbolism, symbolism. And that's very, it means exactly what it says, symbolism, something that um, the the official definition is um, the use of an object, person, situation, or word to represent something else. So something that um, you see and it brings to mind um, something else. Um, like for example, when we see, you know, symbolically, does a snake is um, representative of evil, and um, so um, we think about that black, the color black, or you know, darkness. We hear the word darkness represents wickedness or evil, and so that's what we mean by symbolism. And the symbolism that was used here in scripture. Um, is in um, Genesis 9 14 through 15 and it said again it shall come about when I bring um, clouds over the earth that the rainbow shall be seen in the clouds and I will compassionately remember my covenant and I will um, never I'm sorry, which in between, which is between me and you, and um, ever um, lasting covenant, and um, and never again will the water become a flood to destroy all flesh. So that um, symbolism 
that we talked about is the rainbow. The rainbow represents um, the commitment from God, the promises of God. Um, and so when we see the rainbow, we ought to think about God's promises from Genesis. Um, so that's symbolism um, at its finest because it comes from Scripture. And that's where I really love to see it. Um, so those are the things that we have talked about from Genesis 9. And I wanted to um, just wish you a great uh, week um, and be blessed. And we're going to close out in prayer. Father God, we thank you and we praise you for this time. We thank you for Genesis 9. We thank you for your word. And Father, we pray, Lord God, that even as we read it more and more, we um, get more clarity about you and knowing who you are and knowing that your word is truth, God. No matter what the enemy tries to try to bring to our mind, your word is truth. And you said your truth, your truth, the truth will set us free. So, Father God, I pray that your truth will penetrate our heart. And that we would be set free. As we search for your, through your word and as we search for you, oh God. To walk in relationship. And remember that your covenant, that we can we can really, really trust the source. So we thank you and we praise you for it now. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening to Building Literacy and True Identity here on Kingdom Influencers. Broadcast brought to you by Hope in Christ Ministries. Be blessed and continue to hope in Christ and walk in your true identity in him.